Australia made. Thanks for doing this. Uh, the fans have been sending in their questions. And we have first question is from Matt who asks, first, firstly, thank you for bringing a lot of positivity to the club. My question is, have you got any aims, goals you want to achieve with Hensford? Uh, I think we just want to be as successful as possible. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always been the case that we've always seen it. So it's a long term plan, but it's to try and be as successful as we can um, over time. Peter asks, have you had any regrets about taking on the club? <laughs> uh, depends which government announcement you ask us about. <laughs> and on which day. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, generally we've been really pleased with it all, we've enjoyed it, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Um, the, oh, the biggest problems for us is literally all Covid related and lockdown related and the headaches of rearranging games waiting to find out from Leeds and FA what the next rules are to comply with and where we go from here really. Yeah. And that's been the constant. I think we've been shut down 50% of the time we've owned the club at least. Probably more than that. We brought it in Matt and we've, we've been shut down on and off since then, <laughs> apart from about six weeks haven't we? So, yeah. Yeah. Keeping the lads motivated, they've been brilliant to be fair as well. Yeah they so. have, they have. And for, for me, I mean I've, I've fell in love with the place so as much as I'd like to say, at times there's regrets in terms of headaches, and there is, uh, there is headaches. I wouldn't say there's any regrets because, no, I, I, I fell in love with the football club and the people are yeah. there as well. Yeah, the people have been fantastic. The families enjoy coming here, their wives, children. Yeah, we've even moved over here, so. Okay. Yeah. We've moved over here, so that's good. Andy Witchley asks, favourite signing you made? Not Andy Witchley. <laughs> oh, that, that's it. What was the goalkeeper we had on loan? He was good. <laughs> Cameron. Cameron. Yeah, Cameron was good. <laughs> Favourite sign we made? Do you know what? I'm going to say Keenan. Keenan and Deeks. Yeah, I'm second that, to be fair. They've been wonderful to work with. Yeah. Uh, Ask John, ask, where do you want the club to be in five years? Again, probably as high as possible. Um, <laughs> The, the future is unknown at the moment with uh, how much we can achieve because COVID has literally affected the plans that we originally set out. Yeah. So at the moment we couldn't be sat in a sort of holding pattern waiting to find out how we come out of it and how best for the club we can come out of it. The, the end goal has not changed, make the club successful, take it up divisions as yeah, quickly yeah. as possible. Yeah. Um, but above all else, create a, a club and an atmosphere that everybody enjoys coming to, everybody wants to follow, and it's not just another club. Yeah. It's a club that everyone's proud to turn up to, proud to be a part of, to be a fan, to work here, the volunteers, Play, everybody. Uh, players, everybody. It's, it's, the idea is, is and it always has been, is to make sure there's a Hensford Town Football Club long after me and you have departed and uh, you know, that's, that plan hasn't changed. Another question from Matt, he asks, will we expand the stadium in the future? Uh, again, that really relates back to the last question. Um, the, the initial proposal was to try and develop office space above the stands so it doesn't impinge in any way, shape or form on the club, the stadium. That would generate a revenue and that would help us get promotions way above the division we're in at the moment. Um, because of COVID, obviously with my background, we know for a fact that the commercial aspects have just fell through the floor really, haven't they? Yeah, it's a different world now um, to when we put the original plans in place. Um, so in terms of the stadium expansion, um, the office space situation, the commercial situation won't be what we originally planned because it can't be, be a waste of money. In terms of, if the question relates to expanding the capacity of the stadium, um, I'll do you a simple deal as supporters. You fill, you fill 6,000 week in, week out when we're out of COVID and we'll build a bigger stadium. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have to do something with the stadium t in order to make the club long term sustainable way past our tenure. But what that will be. We could be in daily, weekly meetings together, yeah. discussing all the options, possibilities. Once we know more, we will talk about it. Um, but something will be done at some stage for sure. This is a bit of a light-hearted question. Comes from Ash. Who would win in the fight, Aid or Graham? 
<laughs> You're good to that one, quite Go on, then. Well, as I age runs the security firm, <laughs> <laughs> I think there should only be one answer. It'd be bad for business for me if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but on the same hand, we've always had each other's back and we would never fight. We so. are, we are do quite a lot, but we'd never have a fight. Exactly. <laughs> Joe asks, who's your favourite Hensford player in the current squad? Still not Andy Wichler. Doesn't matter how many times <laughs> Andy tries to find that. Uh, um, God, favourite current player? Um, do you know what? I don't think he's a bad player amongst them ability wise. I think in terms of commitment to the club, he can't look far past uh, Ben Byron, yeah. or captain. Um, I think he's a great lad. I, I think what has certainly recently impressed us the most is that uh, they're a team. The, 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 there isn't an individual in there. They've all got their own personality traits, their, their own characters, their, their own people. But they're brilliant individuals, all of them. Can't fault anyone. But on the same hand, they're a team. So to identify one, I think would be unfair on all of them. Because yeah, on ability, yeah. The way that, even during this lockdown, they've been training hard, they've got Zoom sessions with Jemiah. Yeah. Um, they've been doing various runs, tracking and stuff like that. So they've, they've been superb together. They are a team, and that's what we want in order to develop a winning mentality. Yeah, they're a great group of lads, and you know we, we see the bands they have on WhatsApp and things like that. And they've, re- they've during this lockdown, they've really kept together and kept a tight knit sort of atmosphere. So it's good. Ashley asks, when you took over the club, you wanted to implement a one club philosophy and didn't want the club and fan base in different fractions like in the past. In your honest opinion, how far do you think you both got in that vision? I think in a lot of ways we've we've achieved a lot um, as, as a club um, because the fans got on board, uh, got on board with what we were trying to do. Um, I think the players and the supporters, you know, they're, they're getting great. The players do genuinely appreciate the supporters. And I know, I mean, following football all my life and being involved in the game, you hear that a lot of players and you think, yeah, of course you do. Others genuinely do, like they genuinely appreciate when people are travelling all over the country. So um, I think we've still got a way to go, haven't we? And there's there's one or two areas that I still th- we still think need improvement in terms of pulling us all together. Um, but for me at the moment, it's going fairly well. I still think there's elements we can improve on that. I, th- I think from my side as well. Um, one thing. That- We'd ask of the fans is we know on away games that, that they all, all those that go superb. What we'd like to try and do is start getting us all in a group together. Um, yeah. That that would be great because when the lads are going off, obviously to, socially distanced at the moment. But. Yeah, <laughs> but when when the lads come off the pitch, they're not quite sure where to clap and stuff, and they've said to us as well, "Where do we go? Where where's our home fans?" Because we are dotted around. Um, although we have noticed, because people have noticed me now going around talking to people, or at the bars, um, that everyone is starting to interact a lot more, but the more we can get that sort of away following where we're all together, that would be superb. Um, but as I said, there's various other parts of the club. Um, there's been a bit of kickback, feedback and what have you. But the ethos remains, it's got to be one club, one badge moving forward. And that's all aspects at the moment. We're talking about the youth yep. and how we're more joined about the youth side of things. Uh, we're talking about the academy side and mm-hmm. how we're going to be doing that. The plan was until the, this afternoon's government announcement, depending when this goes out, of uh, we've, it's been told that we're into tier three now. Yeah. We still don't know how that affects us right now. Um, but we're assuming that games are currently going to be postponed when a pin's put in it. Uh, we was planning the friendly for fifth. Yep. Um, then we had the cup game, which we don't know what's going to happen with that. We're waiting on the league and the FA. Um, then we had our home game on the Saturday, but we've actually uh, sorted out a veterans team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for how it seems we're both going to be joining that as yeah, well. Yeah, we're both going to try and emulate how bad we were when we were younger. So be, Indeed. Know. But it, even the veterans team, which we will start to make some more announcements on in coming months or weeks, depending on when it will be, um, we've got some quality players coming through 
Yeah, and that, they've also, you know, they want to get involved with the club, don't they? I mean, with, you know, they've already uh, agreed to come. Bearing in mind this team, as it was, but, you know, it's been set up over WhatsApp so far and things like that. They're sponsoring a the player. Um, I believe that they're sponsoring the Dodds, if I'm correct. Um, things like that say to me that we're going the right way in terms of the one club, one badge ethos. But I said, there's still a bit of work to do. What I do want to add on to that as well is the support here at Keys Park has been absolutely phenomenal. I've got to say that, 600 fans in here. Um, on a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday night against Bromsgrove, the atmosphere was fantastic. But even before that, when results weren't with us, the, the atmosphere's been great. Trevor asks, since taking over the club, what's the positive and negative you have learned? His would be the tenants have been positive and bad referees negative. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, he adds, thanks lads, keep up the good work. That's nice. Uh, positives, yeah, attendance is certainly massive difference and we want to keep on cranking that as soon as the restrictions lift where we can have more numbers. Um, again, we're still waiting on the guidance, but the theory behind it we're currently looking at is as soon as we're in Tier 2, we'll be allowed 1,100 people um, or around that number just above depending on social distancing, bubbles and everything else, there's a lot of factors in there. Um, we thank the fans again for un understanding with the ticketing systems and everything else yeah. that we've had to implement because we know it's been difficult but it's been a necessary evil for us to be able to facilitate the games as such as we have. Um, again, the COVID rules, there's going to be additional restrictions, face masks, things like that. We on all that, but as a positive, the atmosphere, yeah, to definitely. me, a hundred percent has been fantastic. It's a place where we watched a lot of the games last season here, and it was quiet, and the noise that the fans are making, and the belief and the atmosphere, especially given the run of results at the start of the season that we had, yeah. it didn't dissipate. No, and that was incredible. And um, it yeah. makes it special. Um, yeah, big positive. For me, attendance has been a massive positive for us. And I think when we came into this, you know, a lot of people point to the fact that the crowds have been low last season, uh, and they had. We know they had. Um, but we always knew, having spoke to a lot of people around the area, that there was a passion for a football club around here amongst the general population. And I think that positive hasn't uh, gone away at all. I think negatives. Coronavirus. Coronavirus, yeah. Um, the, pos the positive part of the fans wanting the club here um, has also been hit, and, hit by the negative in some way, but it's probably highlighted more of that positive, if that makes any sense. Because the negative side being the fact we can only have 600 in here, and there's certain games where I I'm absolutely convinced, given the number of messages we received and things, we could have sold out more. Um, I think the only, the only other negative has been. Um, having to make tough decisions sometimes which we don't mind doing but it's not an enjoyable process yeah so yeah this comes from that and she asks me and Eva Lisa would like to know who the better physio is I would say Aid. yeah <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah I'm a good physio no um, they've both been wonderful yeah they're both really good at what they do so no, I, can't, I couldn't pick between they're both really good Ross asks a lot of people would argue that five games is not enough time for a new manager and as a new owner of a football club known for sacking managers left, right and centre, it must have been a difficult decision, but why was Andy Morrell sacked? Uh, playing in Singapore was, it wasn't five games. We had watched for six months everything behind the scenes from closed door pre-season friendly mm -hmm. that wasn't even advertised as a friendly. We just had that through every pre-season game. We was watching the development, the player recruitment, the results being the primary item. And our concern was that the fans did the speaking by their feet. And whilst we can't knee jerking any decision because we get lower tendencies, the fans saw the performances was in the was in the crowd itself with the fans, wasn't we? Yeah, on, on the last game. Uh, where we then sat down and had a conversation about it. We was concerned with the results and the mor morale of the team. Um, as we've said in the past, Andy Morell was a fantastic 
coach. Mm. Um, the way he was teaching the team, etc., was superb. Yeah. We we just felt that he was better suited for a much higher level of full time football rather than here. And given the results that we got, yeah. uh, the thing that concerned us the most, and we've told the team this is on the last game. We watched them at half time come out of the tunnel and their heads were facing the floor. Yeah. And that was something that was untenable. I think the big thing for me is and um, a lot of people have asked me that question or similar questions. Um, you're never gonna hear me sit here and say Andy Morell's a bad manager, because he's not. You're not gonna hear me say he's a bad person, because he's definitely not, he's a great guy. I just don't think he was the right fit for this club at this time. It doesn't mean that he wouldn't be the right fit somewhere else. I think he would be. I think he will go somewhere else. And we, we both said when, when we made the decision that we think he'll go somewhere and do a fantastic job because he is he's a really good coach. He's a great manager. He's a great guy. It was just the wrong club at the wrong time for Andy, I think. So in hindsight, do you regret appointing Andy then? No. No, don't regret it at all. I think he was a good guy. I think... Um, we learnt a lot uh, from appointing him, we learnt a lot from him. I think, again, people say that you know, it's four or five games, as, as Graham alluded to, six months, because obviously we were working together you know, back in March, um, before we actually completed the deal, we, we started working on that side of things to make sure the footballing element was done. Um, so I wouldn't say for a minute we regret appointing him. Um, I think it was... A decision that we made based on everything that we said in a previous interview, which was based on when we met Andy, what we thought of Andy, it just didn't work out here. He had the right experience, yeah. he was the right sort of level, the right name to show the ambition of the club. Yeah. He did fit with the club, he was keen to be involved on the sustainability of the club, growing the youth, the academy, and how the players come through. That was all ticking the boxes great, he had the right managerial record <coughs> and the thing we mean Aid is we learn things fast mm -hmm. and as I said possibly it was down to just the pure factor of a bit of bad, well a bit, a lot of bad luck to be honest, mm -hmm. you know the refs was mentioned before, um, it's just a fish, you, you look at the first game we play a few minutes and then we're going to play a sense off and Wrong the red card Wrong was wrong. overturned. It doesn't change the fact of the result of the game. There was quite a few games which was on a knife edge through decisions, don't get me wrong. We had some games that purely the performances wasn't there. Uh, hence our decision really to go a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. I've been working with Keenan uh, alongside on the academy side and saw what he's been doing in terms of that. Uh, that's why we'd asked him to be an interim manager because we knew he was capable, he knew this level, he knew this league and he knew the club. Uh, while we sat back and sort of assessed but we wasn't in a knee-jerk position on having to suddenly find someone else immediately. Mm -hmm. There was some very good candidates put their names in the hat again which this club would be more than happy to employ. Yeah. But, I think the results spoke for themselves and the performances from the team in having brought in a few new players very quickly, changed the system, just the way they operated, um, worked together. Again, it's back to that ethos of one club, one badge, and Keenan and Deeks buy into that more than most, I think. Yeah, so given the working relationship that we got with them very quickly, and given the fact that they did get performances and results and some superb performances at that, mm -hmm. um, it was a no-brainer for us to ask them to actually take it on as, as their appointment rather than go searching elsewhere. Sam asks, what's your opinion on the Scholars' performance this year? The Scholars have been superb so far. Um, they're currently top of their league. Uh, I know we've got three teams, so they're in varying positions mm -hmm. given the fact they're all in the same league. Um, I was sat in a meeting this morning about the Scholars. Their academic side has been exceptional. They're getting nothing but praise. Their attitudes um, has been superb. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but not just that, it's when they're getting involved with the first team, the, the, the first team are actually looking at now training alongside the scholars uh, during the day where most of them can, um, just to keep as sharp as they can do, get more football in their legs. So it's moving towards more of a full-time club as such, whilst being a part-time yep. club. Um, but the scholars are also learning from talking to King and talking to the first team players and interacting together and learning from each other. And, and it's showing. And we've had a number of first uh, scholars come to the first team now and being there or thereabouts, either on the pitch or on the bench. Yeah. But they're keen to pr kick on from there and really push forward into the first team. And I'm told that there's quite a few candidates that we could actually see coming through and playing with some very high level football, either yeah, with us or to the high level clubs in the future. Yeah, we're going to go and watch them uh, once all this lockdown is finished and right off fans there again and spectators even at youth level um, we do plan to go down and watch them because we have a, uh, heard quite a few of them are, are very talented we've seen some of the stuff uh, the GoPro stuff as well yeah, uh, which is really good but yeah no it's um, the scholars have really again it's another part of the club that's, that's really brought into it and it's not just about the football and the bit it's about their attitudes and there's some really good lads there we're also going to be doing a um, Friday night football soon once we're allowed again, under the floodlights, where if we have an away game on a Saturday, our veterans team to get some minutes under our belt and uh, the rest of the players to get match fit ready for next season, we'll be playing some Friday night football. Um, yeah, some scholars. Yep, the scholars will be uh, three of the first four teams that we're planning on playing. Uh, we'll start with an easy Sunday league team and then work our way up through the scholars and Start to get battered, probably. Yeah, 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 get beaten quite badly by the scholars <laughs> looking at the uh, results. They are. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got some exciting, uh, known veterans team with known players that people will know from TV and stuff. Plan to come over and play us as well. Mm. Um, but that will be on Friday nights under the floodlights, and it will be. Whenever we're around, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so we're excited about seeing that. But that will also give the fans a chance to come across, watch, come the, watch, us, yeah. watch the veterans and give support. You can laugh at the veterans and watch the young ones. Yeah. Nicky Lewis asks, with COVID affecting football in the way that it has, can you guarantee the fans that you will be here in eighteen months' time, financially supporting the club? Um, I'd love to promise that I'm going to be anywhere in 18 months, given the current situation in the world. And I think how quickly things change. I'm not going to sit there and make a hand and heart promise I'm going to be here, there or anywhere else. What I'm going to say is what we said all along. is The aim of us in this football club is to make sure this club is here long after we're gone. Now, I don't plan for that to be in 18 months. I know Graham doesn't. We want to be here for a very long time. Um, that's why I've moved my family to the area, for example. But at the same time, coronavirus uh, being the way it is, I don't want to make a promise on anything. But yeah, I can I can say I don't know. If as long as nothing changes in my life, uh, I'll be here. Yeah, I think the big thing with coronavirus is that we're struggling just from a headspace point of view, yeah. purely because the rules are constantly moving. We were told we're going into a localised uh, tier system. We've actually gone into a regionalised tier system. Mm. All of a sudden, all our games, we don't know what's happening with them. The guidance doesn't come through. Uh, financial support, because you mentioned finances. Not existing. It, it's next to zero. Yes, players and some staff can get furloughed in some circumstances. Yes, the government have said there's grants, etc., but they're not there and they're also saying the sport funding has got 11 million pound which is applicable to this level but so far it's we haven't told a thing about it yet i don't think I've no heard. and everything that i've seen it's not a grant it's a loan now a loan is not right for the club and we're here to do what's right for the club yeah. so we, we're just constantly just sitting back and going what's next okay yeah. jumpy turtle as they come and Assess so time will tell really in terms of how successful we are as a club and 
but we're certainly moving in the right direction. Yeah, that's at the start. The aim has always been for us to build something sustainable uh, that can operate long after we're gone. Nothing's changed with that. We we plan to be here for as long as as long as we can be, really. Yeah. Brian says this is a message. It says, "Thanks, lads. You've been great." When this COVID crap is over, your hopes and dreams will materialise because your commitment is there for all to see. Build the team and management and the winning mentality and a thousand plus supporters will be easy. Good luck. Oh, that's, thank you very yeah, much. That's, a, that's really nice. And yeah, I'm, I'm totally happy you're right. That's, that's just really nice to hear. It's nice to see that supporters are, are back in what we're doing. And like we said, I remember saying in the very first interview we ever did, which was quite simply, what we say won't always be what people want to hear. But it will be truth, and it will be you know we'll always be honest um, with everybody at all times, and we've tried to do that. Now sometimes, um, and I've said this before, I can go a bit over the top uh, because I'm very passionate, particularly on a match day. <laughs> I've been locked in rooms and all sorts by Graham, but it's it's definitely not for any reason other than I care, um, as same as Graham. So to hear things like that, I suppose it's yeah, that's really nice. It makes it worthwhile. It yeah, really it does. Talking about the fans for a second as well, we'd just like to say, get well soon. I hope you're doing well to the two gents that got hurt, um, who fell over in the stadium recently. Uh, I know I spoke to the one, I haven't got the other one's number, although I've tried finding it and looking for it. I um, don't know whether you've got your gift shit or not, I've asked the guys to sort it, but with lockdowns, etc., it's difficult. So. Uh, just says get well soon. There's a little special something coming your direction. So get well soon, guys, and uh, hope you're well. Yeah. Uh, you're in our thoughts. But thanks to all the fans. Nathaniel asks if you could bring any player, living or dead, to the club in their prime, who would it be? <laughs> I did say this one. Originally, I said Vinnie Jones. <laughs> but, um, uh, do you know what? For me, I'm I'm going to say um, in terms of uh, Hensford Town players. Um, probably somebody like an Elliot Jarrell or Jamie Osborne, somebody who's been here and had success here. Um, I can't. There's probably many more from many years ago that I wouldn't know about. In terms of a, a, a you know, anywhere in the world player, uh, for me, Paul Gascoigne, because I just I loved watching him play. I think he, he was the, the player I grew up idolising. Um, probably because he was a little bit overweight as well, so he was I probably identified well, with him. Yeah, I would get to find him, but I thought, like, you know, I could be as good as him, but no. Uh, yeah, Gaza for me. I, I, yeah, any player in the world, I, I, I can't help but be impressed by Ronaldo, I suppose. I know it's an easy stock answer, but he's just incredible the way yeah. he's professional, he's a man, his ability. Um, players I like, I like to even rush as a player, you yeah, know, players like that as well, so there's a plethora, but. On the same hand, right now, I wouldn't change a single person. No, no. I think the team is really it's starting to lots. grow and blend, and it's showing, and that's the key thing. Yeah. Although if Paul Gasco and his prime did want to come, I'm sure we'd make room for him on the yeah. budget. <laughs> Paul says, asks, great job so far, Aidan Gray. In the last five or six years, I've always wondered which way the club wanted to go. Since the takeover, I enjoy it more. Does the club still get involved with the local schools to encourage... Young fans for the future? Yes, um, we're getting more and more involved with the schools. We've been waiting for the um, the restrictions to lift, I should say, in terms of crowd capacities, etc., because there will be more schools getting involved around the club, mm -hmm. trying to excite youth and coming through. Uh, we was hoping that we wouldn't be in tier three and would be open next Friday, Saturday. Yes, so. Saturday. Um, and I'd had a meeting yesterday with the school with the view that they was going to bring some of the kids down to come watch and get involved, etc. I think we've spoken to three schools so far mm. are all keen to start getting involved with the club, being involved around players and everything else, lots of little things. Um, so the answer is yes, and it will be happening more and more, but we can't do it until restrictions are lifted because... We don't feel it'd be morally right to be encouraging lots of children around the club mm. when social distancing is difficult enough as it is. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, to every supporter watching this, you know, if you've got children, nieces, nephews, whatever you've got, um, speak to their schools. You know, we, we want to get young people involved at the football club. Obviously, again, COVID pending, as it were, um, because as Graves is quite rightly, you know, it's difficult to get kids. Um, 
to stay still. I've got two, Graham's got four. Four. Um, none of them stay still. So, um, yeah, from that point of view, obviously, we've got to wait our time, but please get in touch with us, and um, yeah, we want to do as much as we can with, with the supporters of the future. Really. Dan Serini asks, who's better looking out of you both? You reckon? Oh, I better shirts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it depends. Uh, depends who you're asking. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd t- we're, 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 we're uh, equally as bad looking as each other. We're oh, going to that. Ask him once, at least say each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vicky asks, "What future events do you want to hold at the club?" Um, Pit Fest was one that yeah. we desperately wanted to put on for the fans, just to say we're here as not just a footballing venue, it's an entertainment venue. Um, and a community venue as well, that's, that's a big thing. That's yeah. A big part of what we're trying to do, isn't it? It's trying to create a community venue. So again, um, in terms of events, they want to put some concerts on, things like that. Again, COVID's damaged a lot of that. Um, we're hopeful, as the rest of the world is, that um, things will change. And when they do, that we can get people in the back in the stadium for, for more than just football. And I know you've got quite a few events you wanted to do, haven't you? Yeah. I, I think to start with, Pit Fest will be one. I've spoke to all the bands. They're all still keen to do it. Um, we're looking at next May, June time at the moment. It is all penciled in. We'll have a tribute act day. We'll have an original bands day. Uh, got some great names and we encourage everyone to get involved get your tickets early because it really helps us as a club if you get your tickets early yeah. if the worst ever happens and Covid hits you get your refunds on the tickets anyway so yeah. you haven't got to worry about that side of things which just helps us plan in terms of numbers etc yeah. um, but we do want to become a venue where it's not just football yes we're a football club yeah but it helps the sustainability of the club. We've spoke about having pool teams here, darts teams. You know, we, the sports association are already great. They're putting quiz nights and things. Yeah. And we want it to become a community hub where people <coughs> come for a family family night out or a family day out. Not even if they don't care about football. Yeah. You know, you, you'll probably see quite a bit more in terms of the supporters association. Uh, we're talking only about the one club, one badge. Um, we've met with them on a number of occasions yeah, recently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very positive meetings, we're completely aligned in terms of moving forwards together, uh, how, how the club can benefit the supporters association and vice versa, how we can both benefit the community to the wider reach of the community. Yeah. Uh, and we're keen to do that. Um, Sadly, again, COVID has stopped the last meeting, which is where we're Yeah, yeah it was just before we got it. locked down, wasn't it? Yeah, so again, there'll be new meetings coming up soon, talks, etc. How we're unveiling a new system with the Supporters Association, mm. how it is properly hand in glove now with the club, so it's clear for the fans, because what we're trying to do is make sure that there's clarity for every fan, mm. whether you're five or four, 105 that if you want to be involved in the club in a certain part you know exactly how you're involved in the club for yeah. being part of whichever organisation of the club it is whether it's sports yeah, it'd, be, it'd be brilliant club, more, more Gambit, people in the sport etc yeah. in the youth so we're working on all those at the moment and those will be coming out soon two questions from Stevie asks what was giving you the most pride during your tenure so far and what further plans do you have to develop supporters involvement Probably, probably for me, that's an easy one. Um, Starbridge. Yeah. Starbridge at home in the first league game. We went up into um, the Watchtower, which doubles up as a spare office, didn't we? About 10 minutes before kick-off. Just have a quick point together and just look around. It was it was, it was was really uh, it was a proud moment. I, the game didn't quite go where we wanted to, of course, but yeah, was a, that was a real proud moment, I think, for us, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the other one was for us when... Uh, just after Keenan was in place and obviously the guys come out, I think it was 1-1 at half time and then I think my favourite bit of reading was we played like Barcelona for a spell. Yeah, the uh, the Bromsgrove game, yeah. 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 Footballing wise that was absolutely fantastic to watch. I think at that moment it showed what we was capable of as a club, as a team. Um, but for whatever reason it worked. Everybody enjoyed it, and it wasn't just the players enjoying it on the pitch, even yeah, though it was, 
it was seen the fans enjoying it. And it was against the side who, like I say, and I've said it before, I've got a lot of respect for Romney because I think they're a very good side with a very good manager, so that that made it all the more impressive for us. Um, so, yeah, that was... A, that was a proud moment. Yeah, that was, that yeah, was like, that's why we're doing it. We want to be delivering that sort of football all the time. It's football, we won't always get those results, but in terms of proud moments, that was my number one. Really. In terms of the supporter engagement, um, <laughs> we just said it, really. Get involved with the supporters club, uh, sports association, sorry. We're, we're trying to really work with those guys. Um, but the biggest thing with me and Graham is that, uh, come and speak to us. You know, when we're at the ground, we'll, we'll always come and uh, we'll have a walk round um, as best we can. Um, you know, obviously different things we have to do during the day, so it's not always possible uh, at all times, but we'll try and come round. But if you see us, stop us, talk to us. That's my biggest one. Yeah, I agree. Nigel asks, as Wrexham have been taken over by Hollywood film stars, which film stars, old and present, would play you in the film? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say Jason Safe, but I'm thinking more Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, a, that's a tough question. Who are you going to go with? Who are you going to go with for yours? I'll, I'll go for a blend of Danny DeVito. You're going to go for Danny DeVito? <laughs> um, I keep getting told Plan B by uh, my mates. Yes. Yeah, my mates keep saying Plan B, so I'm going with Plan B. <laughs> Obviously, with the announcement with Ario, you're going into Tier 3. So what's the plans going forward? Uh, honestly, we don't know. Um, we were going to hold a meeting tonight, but we've kicked that one back 24 hours whilst we wait for the guidance from the league and from the FA. Um, the answer is, be patient. We've been told that the league will complete. That's what the league is planning. That's what the FA have been planning for the trophy competitions, the FA Cup, etc. Whilst we're not in that now, um, we we we've honestly we've got to sit back. We have to assess what these new rules mean, yeah. how that impl what implications that has on the club, what rearrangements we have to make in terms of scheduling games. Um, safety precautions around the ground just please be patient with us we know everyone's got a million questions we want to answer them as much as yeah. you want those answers um, we honestly we have no guidance right now I think the problem is um, being totally honest it took us I think pretty much anybody in Canada is stunned that they're, we're in tier 3 um, those who follow me on Twitter well, I've seen that I have my own personal views and I, I won't discuss them on something to do with the club. What I will say is because of the fact that we didn't expect to be in tier three at all, um, that took us a little bit blindsided, if I'm honest. Now, we did have certain plans in place. However, the issue we've got, as Graham quite rightly says, is we don't know what the government and the FA are going to say. Um, we had this pre-season where you know, we were planning for no fans and it was all behind closed doors and then all of a sudden they said oh actually no non-elite teams can now they may well say that again i'm not promising that i don't know um the the issue is we've got to wait uh, for them so if people are asking this question i've had loads of down and no grandmas we genuinely haven't got the answers because we have not had anything yet from the southern league from the fa from the government because i believe and to be fair i'm not criticizing any of them for that because I believe they're still doing their meetings on it and how to plan it going forward. Yeah, as soon as we know, we will make official announcements. Yeah. Until then, you might see the odd tweet or the odd Facebook post where we suggest certain things. That's us planning to give everyone a heads up. Or it's just me ranting. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, but when we officially know, we stick it on the website as well. Uh, just be patient with us guys and girls. You know, thanks for your support. Yeah, thank you. It's been an incredible journey so far. Let's keep on there, uh, our fingers and toes crossed. And when we come back, we carry on where we left off with uh, some true panache out there. And uh, that's what I love like that word. <laughs> um, you know, the results keep on going in our favour, and teams start getting frightened to be playing us. And yeah. uh, that belief, I know that belief there in the team. I'm now the police there in the fans. Yeah. Um, let's keep it going. If if we as a club can get the support that we have done, given our league position especially in some of the games that we've played, and be turning it round so quickly, the only way is one direction. That's up. And uh, for me, I just want to say I'm not going to grow any 
cool catchphrases like you might see on the TV at the moment, on the news or on the government sense. It's all I'm going to stay safe, is to everybody stay safe. And uh, we really want to see you back in Keys Park, so. Yeah. So in your honest opinion, do you think we'll have fans back at Keys Park at some point towards the end of this year or will it be in the new year? Honestly, we don't know. I'd hope so. Um, I'd be very disappointed if we aren't. I'm already disappointed that we're in Tier 3. Um, but at the same time, we don't make the rules. The minute they say we can't believe me, we will be the first people to be singing and dancing about it. Social distancing, of course. We are certainly not sitting back quietly, rest assured. Yeah. We are lobbying at very high levels of the government now because it's reached a point where we're not happy to sit back and just wait for the next rollout of this is what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. We need some answers ourselves because we have to plan this season. And that's not just on behalf of ourselves and our football club, that's on behalf of people in Cannock uh, and in Hensford and the surrounding areas of the Cannock Chase district because there's a lot of businesses out there at the moment that are struggling and with what's happened today there's going to be people who are really uncertain so it's not just about us, it is about all these businesses as well, we're, we're lobbying for, for the whole area really. Yeah, you've got nightclubs, pubs, beauty salons, You've got all the various, we've, we've got hairdressers that even sponsor here and I can only feel for every business that's in this area, you know, it's, it's so difficult and we have to support each other, make sure everyone's safe and everything we can do as a club to do that, we will. Thank you guys for answering the fans' questions. Thank you. Thank you.